Hi, I'm Maddie Dai, and I'm going to teach you how to draw office dynamics. It's a beautiful bed, bed spread behind you. <laughs> okay, I am in a hotel room in quarantine in New Zealand. And I have to say that, like, the, the decor of this place was the shades of grey and brown. Great. How long have you been trapped in this room? I think I'm on day six, but I'm actually not certain. I'm just going to go when they tell me to go. <laughs> Today we're talking about uh, cartoons about office politics. Mm -hmm. um, but even before the pandemic, you had uh, stopped working in an office, right? This is true. Yeah, yeah. Still, you can't fuck the urge to make jokes about office life. Oh, I can't quit it. <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's like kind of one of the great tragedies of my life in some ways that lots of the things I'm interested in are kind of solitary pursuits. But I just find it so enjoyable to observe office dynamics. It's really shocking that the woman who's been locked in a hotel room for six days is suddenly craving <laughs> office <laughs> interaction. <laughs> it's like, you got me particularly vulnerable. So the scene is a little girl and a little boy who are looking at a hopscotch and instead of numbers, they've replaced it. Work, 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 dear. And then the little boy is saying to the little girl, you first. It's not a particularly cheering cartoon. It's, like, it's so funny because that was like one of my first cartoons in and my office generously wanted to celebrate me. And so they ordered some cartoon, some mugs with cartoons on them for the office. And so we had loads of these mugs that said work, 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 death. Just like sort of ominously hanging around. I'm just imagining um, seeing each other with Prosecco and their work, 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 work. Yeah. <laughs> So one of the reasons I love this cartoon is because I feel like it could work without a caption. The sort of like work, yeah. work, work to death hopscotch is funny enough. But I, I feel like this little boy saying this to the little girl adds a whole <laughs> other <laughs> <element. laughs> Definitely. Yeah, 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 yeah. He set up this whole yeah, he drew this his design. Ah, right. oh, look. Am I wrong? Am I wrong? <laughs> yeah, and then the perspective here also is from this sort of like high aerial view which is sort of the adult view, which I think makes it <laughs> yeah, even totally. more tragic. I'm talking now about how to create sort of like naive characters. I guess I would say I'm interested in characters who earnestly try hard with maybe mediocre results, but that doesn't stop them from trying. I think because I just like people like that. I like strivers. Anyway, I would say in general, um, drawing characters who are who are sort of naive, maybe schlubs, so, sort of just muddling through life. It, a lot of it comes from the way in which you 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 do the posture. I think sort of like they don't necessarily have great posture. These people. I, I also should say I think I count myself among them. I don't want to dunk on anyone. I'm sort of like I think these are my people. And I also think that there's a lot to be said about the way that the eyes, that the eyes can do a lot. I always think about the kind of character I want to draw is like the story of this like New Zealand woman who saved up and saved up and finally went to England. She was desperate to see the Big Ben and then she finally got there and the Big Ben was covered in scaffolding. I don't know why, but I'm always like, she's my girl, you know? But children obviously that's like that's all they really do is strive and fail and so with children to me it's more fun and interesting to draw them if you imbue them with a kind of world wariness so this is three people in a room and they are preparing a presentation for their billionaire funder and the caption is yes we're a charity tackling skyrocketing income inequality but we're also a charity that should be saying i love my billionaire funder like billionaire funder is sort of a euphemism for like late capitalist overlord too <laughs> like, oh 100 <laughs> they're unavoidable i keep trying to switch careers and they just seem to be everywhere yeah i think one hilariously funny thing about this drawing is that graph. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's like one line's like the amount that billionaires are getting taxed and the other line is the rising rate of poverty. Just so you know, just fucking with you. I feel like one thing that you do in a lot of your captions about offices is sort of play with jargon 
Do you have any sort of tips and tricks for taking jargon, which is pretty gross, and making it funny, turning it in on itself and making it funny? Yeah, I'm obsessed with jargon. In fact, I got a text message from someone the other day who was like, oh my God, I have the greatest new bit of jargon just to tell you. It was someone in a meeting who said, I don't want to just receive feedback. I want to receive feed forward. Oh. Isn't that amazing? It's like sometimes you just meet someone who's like so completely forged in the fires of startup culture and like without irony, they just live it. Oh yeah, I actually have a notes, a notes list of like my favorite jargon. Showed up, leaned in, circled back, poured in, leveraged, synced up, picked a brain, piggybacked. I feel like I'm really disrespecting them doing them in my accent. This is not the original form, heavy heart, touch base. <laughs> held space held space held space that's a good one i can't even imagine in, what, in moments in which i've held space there are a few more but you gotta save them for future cartoons i gotta save them can't give away all my industry secrets you know the general startup archetypes that i'm familiar with include this woman who probably has multiple master's degrees and then finds herself in a position where she sort of recommends making Facebook profile layovers with something that says like, all together or in it for each other. And she's also probably the one who did the whole presentation, collected all the data, did all the little graphs, and then ultimately it will be presented, perhaps, by this guy who does lots of things like m maybe in his Bumble bio, he calls himself a digital nomad. Maybe not. Maybe he's more like a sort of like fail fast innovator. Anyway, he's like 24 and somehow he's angled himself so that he presents the pitch. This man here, I would say, sort of has the kind of thousand eye stare that you sometimes get when you're working at a startup. When you realize like, oh, the systemic racism was coming from inside the glass paneled war room. He is hoping, though, that in lieu of actually dealing with the problems that they set out when they were starry-eyed and bushy-tailed starting out in the sector, that they end up eating their bodies worth every day in Chobani yogurts to make up for it. It's a fake magazine, and it is a woman who looks, I think this is the sort of classic, out of her depth naivete. Around her is a bunch of heads. Okay, so you internalize feedback. What next? Seem more approachable. Move your mouth while you silently read. <laughs> Five outfits that say dependable and unlikely to get pregnant. How to find small gaps in conversation to speak. Let things slide. High five with confidence. Bonus, eight blank pages for things you wish you had said. <laughs> yeah, this is a ridiculously <laughs> weird layout for a magazine. <laughs> <laughs> and for that she as the cover star she is so small <laughs> and just free floating in the abyss that's, yeah that's yeah part of it's so funny because she's just trying so hard to be unobtrusive a hundred percent like she could have taken up more space but she chose not to i feel like the bonus as the punchline for this is so great that it ends on the blank page <laughs> yeah yeah it's true though but how much of life is just agonizing about things you just delivered perfectly in your head six to eight hours after the fact and also saves on printing the actual logistics of working out how to do a magazine cover is like working out exactly how many jokes you can fit that are like illegible like on a phone this is more of like maybe like a reader's digest style magazine I would say that I, I did look at like a number of magazines for inspiration, but the thing is all the subjects of the magazine covers looked incredibly confident and excited and happy um, to be on their magazine cover, which to me doesn't vibe with this magazine because this woman, as it was pointed out, there's loads of white space around her, which she's nervous to take up. The other thing I like to imagine in this photo shoot, this imaginary photo shoot, is that there was a photographer who was sort of being like, okay, I now want you to be sexy, and she, and she maintained this pose. And he was like, okay, give me fierce. 
and she maintained this pose. <laughs> but I think it's nice that she doesn't even cast a shadow because she knows that that would be too obtrusive and she's just trying to do her best to not take up too much space in the office environment. A shadowless woman without fingers, just mittens for hands, <laughs> in the office, getting by.